Hi folks, it's Daniel here and in today's tutorial we're going to discover the power of the depth blur neurofilter feature inside of Photoshop. Now before I continue showing the ins and outs of how it works, I just want to state that the depth of field that you see in my images is something that's created at camera level. It's not something that I do in post, okay? I can't stress that enough today. Right, so the depth of field that I achieve in my images is a result of the types of lenses that I choose, okay? It's lenses that generally shoot at wide apertures and it's generally lenses with longer focal lengths, okay? That combo creates a natural separation of my subjects from the background. It's not the only reason why I shoot with primes with fast apertures. I'm shooting these lenses because they shoot at wide apertures allowing a lot of light into my camera and when I've got a lot of light coming into my camera it means that I can shoot with faster shutter speeds and also much lower ISOs okay and that results in good clean images with separation of my subjects from the background now in this case over here I was shooting with a Nikon D800 and a 28 millimeter f 2.8 lens but Instead of shooting at f2.8 and getting a natural separation of my subjects from the background, I shot at f6.3. Okay, uh, back then in 2013, I was listening to a lot of advice online, and the advice that I saw seemed to suggest that I need to start shooting at a narrower aperture in order to get both subjects in focus. So when I got out to the shoot, I thought, you know what, I, I don't want a chance at shooting at f2.8 and my subjects aren't in line and one of them would be out of focus so I naturally of course said to myself well instead of 2.8 I'm going to shoot at f6.3 and as a result yes I got everybody in focus both subjects in this case in focus but I pretty much got everything else in focus as well and while it can work in certain instances in this case here it didn't really work for for me in this scene here they're, start, they're starting to blend in a little bit with the background, okay? Now what I want to do in this case is use that neuro filter to create that little bit of extra separation. So if you're one of those photographers who's got an image like this and wants to beef it up, so to speak, and create a little bit more separation from your subjects from the background and not make it look like an iPhone image, uh, this, this tutorial is for you really, okay? Or if you don't have lenses that can shoot at faster apertures and longer focal lengths to create natural blur, then this tutorial is also for you, of course. So let's go and explore where this is. What we need to do is click on the filter menu at the top here and then head down to Neuro Filters. And this is going to be a really simple process. It's really intuitive. Okay. What we're looking for here is the depth blur feature. I'm going to simply click this little switch on and Bob's your uncle. There you have some lovely depth of field in this image. Now this is quite strong for this particular image because at this focal range at 28 millimeter the blur is not really going to look like this in real life okay so we're going to have to back it off a little bit. This blur that you're seeing here is more representative of say for example 85 millimeter 1.8 at f1.8. So what we need to do is go over to where it says blur strength and all we're going to do is just Pull it back to say around about 20 or 30 percent and there you have a much more natural feel to what it would be like to shoot a 28 millimeter at say for example f 2.8 in this specific location that's how it would generally look like okay this is how it could have turned out first of all but it didn't okay i shot it f 6.3 we've got a couple of other little controls here the one that's ticked on by default here is focus subject, okay? And in this case here, obviously, what Photoshop has done is actually selected our subjects for us, okay? So it's created a little mask around them and it's blurred out as necessary, okay? We can turn that off and then you, when you turn that off, you'll see that focal distance gets switched on. So let's just turn this off and we'll play with this first option over here, focal distance. If I slide it up ways, it's going to focus past my subjects to something in the background. Let's let go of that and see what happens. Look at that. So it's kind of giving the illusion that you're using a longish lens and you're focusing on something behind subjects. And now everybody in the foreground here 
is getting out of focus, okay? If I slide this even more, you're gonna focus at things right in the background and suddenly our subjects are out of focus. Likewise, if I pull this slider way back to the starting point here, you're gonna start seeing them being a little bit more out of focus, but some more things in the foreground here are in focus, okay? So I like to just keep this focus subject on, okay? I don't like to mess around with that. I don't need to play around with the focal distance. Uh, what we can do, however, is play around with the focal range here. And all that does is just shift back the out of focus area further back. Let me just increase the blur strength here so you can see what this looks like, okay? So you can see that the blur starts right here behind the subjects here, just above his foot. And if I slide the focal range up here, you see that more of this area goes in focus and then slowly and progressively gets more and more out of focus towards the background. That's all that does. It just tells you how much of an area in focus it needs to be. It's as simple as that, okay? We've got all of these other little features over here, temperature, tint, saturation. I don't really play around with that because this is something that you would uh, adjust on a global perspective. But for this purpose and this tutorial here, I'm just gonna bring this back to say around about 30 and just drop that focal range just behind my subjects here, just to mimic what it would look like shooting the 28 millimeter F2.8 at F2.8 instead of F6.3 in this case. I say that in inverted commas here because it doesn't really look like that, but I'm trying to mimic sort of what it would look like in post, okay? Let's click OK here and look at the results. So before and after, I'm saying that looks a lot more pleasing. It's not perfect at this stage. Adobe is still working on this feature. It's still in beta. And you can see some little areas over here that it lost control of, but it's nothing that a little bit of masking and a little bit of cleanup can't fix up. So if I go to this layer one here and I use my spot healing brush tool i can get rid of those little pieces over there that it seemed to forget about okay there we go and inside little areas like this okay but you get the gist of it you're able to actually create some pretty natural looking blur behind subjects and you can take this image that was shot at f6.3 and make it seem as if it was shot at a wider aperture of say f2.8 so there you have it. This is the depth blur neurofilter feature inside of Photoshop. So folks, I just wanted to say thank you very much for all of your awesome support and we'll see you in the next session. Cheers for now.